In this video, I will show you how to use GraphQL in an Angular application. We'll be using Apollo Client, which also has a version for Angular. With Angular, you can build rich frontends without having to use any external libraries, as Angular is a framework that comes with built-in support for stuff like TypeScript, routing, or forms. Also, we'll be using a REST API that is transformed into a GraphQL API using StepSAM. So let's dive into VS Code. In VS Code, I've set up a new project, and in this project we will use the Angular CLI to create a new Angular application. To install the Angular CLI, you can just run npm install, apply the global flag, and then type at angular slash CLI. This will install the Angular CLI, which I've already done. And as soon as you've installed the Angular CLI, you can use the CLI to bootstrap a new Angular project. Bootstrapping a new Angular project is done with the command ng new, so ng is the Angular CLI, uh, providing the name of your new project, and you can also specify the directory in which you want to create a new project. Once you press enter, Angular will ask you some questions such as, do you like to set up routing? And for this, I will go with no. Which style sheet format would you like to use, such as CSS or SAS or LAS? I just go with plain old CSS. And then it will start creating all the packages and install my node modules. And then the installation of Angular and the new project is complete. And to run this project, you can just run npm start, which will start the Angular CLI. It will bundle your code and then render it on a localhost endpoint in your browser. And from your browser, you could see the initial application which is basically a placeholder to help you learn more about Angular. On this page you can find links to the Angular docs, uh, the CLI documentation, the blog of Angular, and even the commands to create a new component for example, which we will do in a bit. Because before, before we create a new component, we're going to look at the GraphQL API that we'll be using in this tutorial. I already created this GraphQL API, and if you want to create the same GraphQL API, make sure to follow the link to the examples in the description of this video. In here you can find the example called with Angular, which you can find in the steps and GitHub repository with all the R examples. If I would go to the dashboard, I can find more information about the endpoint that I already created before. And this is basically a graphicalized version of the Practical Dev REST API. And with this REST API, you can get uh, posts from the Practical Dev website, and you can also get a single post, and you can do much more. But for this tutorial, we only will be using the query to retrieve all the posts, which is basically sending a request to the Practical Dev REST API. And to get this query, uh, we can use this query called posts, and in there we can get fields like the ID, the title, and the description. And I don't need this one, and I don't need this closing. Prettify this, and when I run it, I should get the latest articles that are posted on Practical Dev. In here, I can also filter for a username, uh, and let's try this with my own username, get Hecti. If I run this, I will only get a limited set of articles that are written by myself. So this is the GraphQL API we'll be using. It's a public GraphQL API, and to make it public, you need to add some extra uh, options to your config.jml file when you set up the GraphQL API. But this is all explained in the example that you can find in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out. Back in VS Code, we can stop the Angular CLI from running because we're going to create a new component. And this component will show the posts that we retrieve from the GraphQL API. And to create a new component, you can run mggenerate, component, the name of your component, and then you can also specify in which module you would like to create this component. And today we'll be adding this to the app module, which has the placeholder screen that you just saw. So let us create the component by running this command, and it will just generate some files. For example, it will generate a HTML file, which will render the placeholder title posts work. So what we will do, we will first clean up our app component. Because in here there's tons of boilerplate files, uh, which we can just delete. But I'm going to keep in the uh, styling for the toolbar, because I actually like this toolbar and I like to keep it in for the rest of my application. Let me get rid of all the other CSS besides the toolbar. 
like this. And then I also want to leave the toolbar in. And get rid of all the other things. Like this. And instead of having it say welcome, I would like to have it say my posts, as this is a list of all my posts. And then just save it. If you would now run the npm uh, start command again, you would see a new improved application that only has the toolbar with the title my posts. But it's not what we will be doing today, because we want to have the post component generated inside the app component. So what we will do here, we can reference the app dash post component like this. And this will render whatever we have in post.component.html. And why is this? Because in post.component.ts, you can find the selector for this component. So by using the selector, you can reference it from other AP HTML files. With our component in place, we can now continue by installing Apollo Angular. And Apollo Angular is a variant of Apollo Client, but specifically made for Angular. And we can install this using npm, but we can also install it using the Angular CLI. And when we install it using the Angular CLI, we get the added benefit of code generation. So the CLI will generate some boilerplate code for us, such as a file that contains the connection details to our GraphQL API. Therefore, we just need to run ng add and then Apollo Angular. It will confirm if we actually want to install this version, which we want. It will install the packages, all the NPM modules, and then it will also ask us for the URL to the GraphQL API. And for this, you will insert the URL that was generated for your GraphQL API when you created it. So if you would try out the example in the description, you will see a endpoint printed in your terminal, which is the endpoint that you should insert here. It will also ask you for your version of GraphQL, and we can just go with the suggested value of 16. And again, this will generate some boilerplate code, meaning that we don't have to do this ourselves. Most importantly, it created a file called graphql.module.ts that includes the connection details to your GraphQL API. And we're going to create a new file where we will be storing all our operations that we use in this application. Let me create a new file in the app directory and let's call it graphql.operations.ts. In here we need to import uh, GQL from Apollo Angular and we can also create a new constant called getPosts because this operation will be getting posts for us. And of course here we need to use GQL here so we can get some syntax, hi syntax highlighting and here's the lint knows uh, we're putting GraphQL in here. Let me format this document. And this should typically work, but somehow it doesn't. Uh, but it's fine. We can just save this document and we should be all good. Of course, we need to make sure to also export this operation. Otherwise, we won't be able to use it. And where would we use this operation? That would be in the post.component.ts file. In this file, we need to import some additional things, such as Apollo from Apollo Angular, and also our getPost operation. We also need to import a on init interface because that's what we'll be using because this post component, when it's first mounted or rendered in a browser, we want to get all the posts from the GraphQL API. So that's why we would need the on init method. So post component will implement on init. And then we would need some extra things here like defining the posts and setting any error and also make a constructor to set up Apollo. The ng on init function will look like this, where we would be using Apollo, so we're using this constructor for Apollo, to watch a specific query, which is the get post operation that we created before. And as soon as the value changes in this query, we should update the state of this.posts. This would be this information that's available inside the component. And let me just quickly clean this up. If we would save this, actually nothing will change because we're not rendering anything just yet. So let's continue by rendering all the posts that we are retrieving using this uh, setup with Apollo. In postcomponent.html, we can replace the existing HTML with some new uh, values that I copy pasted from my, from my notes. You can see here that we're doing some error handling. So if there's an error with the data fetching, we can just 
render this part that explains the error. And we're also going to be setting a for each loop that loops over all the posts that we retrieve. And it will display a single post. It will display the title, description, uh, and that's basically it. It will also check if this value exists. And if it dis doesn't, and none of the posts will be shown. Let me just save this. And then finally, we would need to add some styling to the post.component.css file. Again, I would be copy pasting this for my notes. Um, so don't feel weird if things are going too fast. In here, you can see I set up a post container styling where I have a grid display, so just CSS grids. I set the columns to be three columns in a row. And that's about it. And some other minor styling settings. If I would save this and I restart my Angular application by running npm start, I should be able to see all the posts coming from Practical Dev directly in my browser. So npm start will actually run ng serve, which is the command to bundle and render your code in the browser. In my browser, I'm now able to see all the different posts coming from Practical Dev, which are the same posts that we had in our uh, GraphQL Explorer earlier on. And this is how easy it is to set up GraphQL together with Angular. And if you like this video, make sure to use the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel. That way you will be updated once we launch a new video.